G'day! How you going? Well, in this video, I'm actually going to do something quite amazing. And uh, remember, I actually tried to store a couple of insects inside this incredible Holbatrus product here, which costs around £27.50 now these days. I'm just hoping that this toy will downsize. But there's a problem here inside. Remember yesterday? I actually stored a lot of bugs inside, eh? And that's because I couldn't find any other bugs here, I suppose, that were living in this section here. I don't know if there's some which are alive, some of them were dead. I'm going to try to go to the side, eh? And there's actually a couple here I've actually suggested. Uh, this earwig is alive, and so are these two beetles, and these are actually pretty alive. And I've actually got this one here from, I think these are actually new beetles, because the other two run away, so I've actually caught one, and there's also another here I actually couldn't suggest, I suppose. There's another earwig, hey? Okay, so I've only caught two earwigs. There was one on this section here, and there was another one. So there's obviously two of these earwigs that I've actually caught, and that is actually quite a great idea to probably get into entomology or to control pests as well, which will be a very nice way of just showing how opportunistic insects can be at times. I actually enjoy looking at earwigs and beetles. Look at that, it's going for a runner. I tell you what, I really enjoy studying a whole bunch of bugs. I could tell you guys, I, I could literally just look at these guys for hours. But just because I can look at these guys for hours, doesn't exactly mean there's good news. Whoever thought looking at them for hours may also be a bad thing, because they can pasteurise the house, and also, they can also be, well, dead as well. That guy must have st I think this guy needs to basically um, stay, because I think this one's going to terrorise my house. Well, anyways, with the little critters inside of that Holbatross product, I don't know, I would say this could be the first or the second version of that product. And I suppose it's such amazing to just, you know, take a look and basically, yeah, I would probably say it's very nice to just look at this fantastic product with all a whole bunch of insects inside. And I'm actually quite surprised that the other earwig I've actually caught has survived. And I think it must have got a very huge appetite on feeding on the dead wood lice. And in this video, because I just started with an Australian accent, and I keep on using my Australian accent because of my heritage from Leo can video, I think we're going to take a look at two of these £13.95 Australian themed products, which are basically by some birds. And we're going to kick off with this one here, the Laughing Kookaburra Australian Bush Flock Trial Pack. And these birds are archetypally one of the most best known of all birds that you actually tend to hear in the bushes of Australia. And yes, if there's a sign of a bushfire, we would certainly be sadly be, you know what, I would actually be quite uncertain for the fact that we will sadly miss these birds in future times, but nevertheless these guys can keep on rising, whatever they're like, for hours, which is a good thing, because kookaburras are such a very nice comedic, well I'd say, it's a very nice sense of humour, I suppose. I mean, they do sound like monkeys. I might try and do the kookaburra impression maybe later on in this video. There's the anatomy of how to do the birds, which is pretty amazing indeed. You know, this is actually quite a very clever looking set of... <laughs> I mean, look at the... <laughs> I don't know why I'm just laughing here, but look at the eyes there. Oh my, oh my goodness, man. I'm not sure why I'm speaking here, but look at the eyes. They look, I can tell you what, they almost look like they're dirt. Yeah, it looks like that one of the kookaburras, to me, they almost looks like their heads have been hydrocephalic. It looks like this one here, it looks like his eyes are popping out from his veins. It looks like he's got a very giant inflamed forehead. Pretty weird, isn't it? I don't know why I'm just speaking in a very weird way. Maybe it's time to be a little bit stringent because I think it's time to do a bit of ornithology and it will be quite prudent to combine the two of ornithology and also entomology. So here are all the kookaburras and they look pretty amazing indeed to me. Okay, what do we all know about the laughing kookaburra? It comes in this very interesting colour. Unlike the blue winged kookaburra, it does not have all sorts of blue feathering plumages on this sort of bird. Although, do bear in mind, I do see pictures of a laughing kookaburra with the traits of a blue winged kookaburra, showing the bluish greenish uh, wing plumage on the wings there. 
which is pretty interesting. And one thing I would say is about kookaburras is that they are basically the largest kingfishers in the world. And also, they're also the, one of the other kingfishers that doesn't tend to eat fish a lot, though. I mean, you know, they're actually tend to basically, you know, they will take your pet goldfish if you have them in the pond. But unfortunately, uh, these guys have suffered in a huge decline thanks to the bushfires and also a bit of climate change in Australia. And as I'm making this video, I think recently in Australia, we actually had a massive heat wave in Australia. And uh, I'm actually living in the UK at the moment, but this is what I'm actually talking about. And sorry for my very poor talking here, but yes, I'm going to be fairly stringent here. And maybe just to sound myself a lot more confident, I would love to, you know what, I think there's one thing I might try and say in this video. Here we go. <laughs> Well, I dare say that was my very first time of doing a kookaburra impression here. But I'm just glad eh, that I'm pretty sure maybe I'm just being a bit too stringent for the way on how kookaburras actually tend to sound like. Look pretty amazing, eh? They've got a very beautiful brown tail there. I mean, that's what kookaburras are like. It looks like, almost looks like, it looks like a racing helmet. To be honest, it almost looks like some sort of weird uh, racing helmet with a beak on the front there. It looks pretty conical in a sense. And one thing I'd say about kookaburras is that they make these sort of laughing noises at, um, let's just say, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but during spring, which is September, October, and November, this one here doesn't have a name, but the others do, and I'd probably say kookaburras tend to be monogamous during, let's just say, spring, and make a whole bunch of noise. And also, not just that, I think laughing kookaburras also tend to make this noise when rain is approaching. Actually, I love the grey ID tanning there, and one thing I could have wished for in future times is I could make a googly-eyed kookaburra sort of product, because I think kookaburras are basically the comic, well, I'd probably say it's the comic relief for all wildlife, I suppose, eh? Pretty amazing when you think about it. I love the grey ID tanning of the flip-flap logo. It's such an amazing thing to get into Australia. And it feels like it in the way I should actually be like, I suppose, eh? Tends to be highly expensive going to Australia, mate. It really does hinder the way on what people are feeling like, I suppose. Maybe it does. Well, I'm just going to basically close this one here. There you go, it's closed. And I might probably show you this product here. It's the Australian Whistling Duck Species Mixed Flock 12-pack. £15.95. There's various different species of ducks that you get from Australia. There's the plumbed, spotted and wandering duck. And I think these are all whistling duck species. Unfortunately, these birds inside don't have names. But I'll try and have a guess on what these guys are like. Because I'm very curious and also very, very prudent and opportunistic. And a little bit stringent. Which means it's going to be a very serious person now, I'm pretty sure. But... And um, I'm just going to basically show you what these are. Well, this one here with the red beak and also the feet there. Uh, I think this one here is a plumbed whistling duck. And I think they look like this. It looks pretty amazing, doesn't it? I actually love the detail like that, I suppose. I'm not sure if I put the names underneath their, their booties because I think it'll be quite tricky to basically just to put a bit of naming on there. But I think it'll be totally legitimate, I suppose. And you have to excuse my bad talking here. I have got, literally just got, and I, I'm actually still. Oh my god, my voice is literally. I mean, I've had. Oh great, my voice is starting to basically just die now at the moment. No, eh? I don't know why I'm saying it, but my voice is still. Oh my god, my voice is gonna sound pretty weird today. Well, sorry about that, but I'm pretty sure that the rest of my voice may permeate through the rest of this video here. This one here that I'm handling there is a wandering whistling duck because it's got those sort of detailings there. It's also got extra red detailing on this bird here. I'm not sure if I could update the rest of this model here because it looks pretty nice So, Well, I think it's missing a few extra details here. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's missing a bit of extra details on this section of the wing here, which looks pretty amazing. And if I grab this one here, 
and because hence the name it's spotted and despite that this is the spotted whistling duck but it doesn't have any spotted details which is quite interesting to hear and also a bit misleading as well which also sums up the disappointment as well I think this one here is a bit an oh my goodness me I think this one's a bit of an iffy fly let me try and go and get another one here no this one's a whistling duck from the wandering group I would say it's a wandering whistling duck pretty cool let me try and take a look at this one here it's a plumbed whistling duck this one's pretty um, awful in the way it flies let's try this one here and that one there, yeah, I think it looks pretty nice, isn't it? I'll try the other one there. That's a wandering whistling duck because it's got those there. Pretty good fly. I think it's a very uh, good fly, of course. That there. Oh yeah. And that is a spotted whistling. No, it's a wandering. Sorry. And that one there is a spotted whistling duck. There you go. Well. To me, I would say this could be the wild card of all of the nut toys. Maybe it's just the way I'm just performing. Maybe it's the way they've been made. And I'm just thinking that I might try and basically cover a whole bunch of differences between all these three specimens here. But I think I have to rest my voice for a while because I think I'm actually just sounding. I'm actually just starting to sound just a bit iffy. If I feel like I'm in the fire wheel. Maybe that's just another file. I don't know what I'm doing there at the moment. But I might try and do a bit of entomology. That would actually cheer me up though. That would be really prudent, wouldn't it? And I think that's just about it, eh? Not much I can do. But I think that's just about it. Okay, let's do it. And yes, my voice is starting to be oh so sore at the moment. Well, I might probably finish off with the whole terrarium. And oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god, jeez! Woo! Oh my god. Looks like I've got a very rogue earwig there. Looks like he's going... No, I suppose I don't know why this earwig is just going rogue. But I think it'll just go like that. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm just trying to make a huge terrarium for these and bugs. Look pretty nice. And I have to probably say thanks for a bit of watching there. Thanks for your time. And I'm very sorry for the very stringent and also very uh, sore voice that I've got. And I've still got the frog in my throat. I'm going to put the, what would you say, little earwig away. My god damn, these, these, oh, I can tell what, these bugs are actually quite very intelligent there. I'll have to probably put that one back in the end, but I'll have to probably just end the video here. I don't know. I just think I'm something totally different though. Anyways, sorry for the rough and readiness. As always, I just have to say thanks for watching and bye for now. And that earwig is on the loose now. Okay, bye.